We continue our team coverage now this morning with CBS 4's Ted Scout. He's also live on the scene. He joins us now with more Ted. And I don't know if you'd hear Austin. He mentioned bunk beds. Uh, you could see in some of those partially collapsed units. You talked to a witness who saved a 12 year old boy from the rubble with his hand in the air. We are just hearing some chilling details and getting a vivid description of what that chaos and, and terror was like this morning. Yeah, Francis, let's kind of set it up. If you look back at the building there, <clears throat> you can see a different vantage point than Austin's. Well, we're seeing the north side of the building. You can see uh, off the balconies all of the debris hanging, and then that big pile of debris down there at the bottom. Chopper 4 gives a better vantage point of that. It's in all of that debris there that a guy we spoke to this morning said he was just a couple blocks away. He heard the commotion, saw all the dust coming uh, from the building. He ran over there. When he got there, he saw a child. Uh, in all that rubble, kind of buried underneath a mattress with his hand sticking out, uh, asking for help. Ted, also, uh, we, we saw the different vantage point from uh, where Austin was. There were a lot of people still kind of looking. Uh, are we still seeing that situation with you where you are? Have most of the people left? I do see a much clearer scene behind you. I know you mentioned some of the Broward Sheriff's units have gone this morning, but what's it like where you're at? Where I am here, what we've been finding is uh, family members have been coming up to this area. They've been trying to go up to fire rescue over there to ask if there's any information about their loved ones. Uh, what they're being told is that they should go to that family reunification center, which is at 9302 Collins Avenue, so just a few blocks north of here. 93rd and Collins, that's where people are supposed to go uh, if they are concerned about family or friends. A number that they call 305-614-1819. Again, 305-614-1819. And Ted, where Brooke was, uh, the mayor of Surfside spoke. I don't know if you were able to hear that through your earpiece, but he had mentioned that that part of the building was clear and that the part that you're on, they're still waiting for the go-ahead. Uh, obviously a very dangerous situation. Uh, you know, the mayor, too, trying to get updates like many of us, uh, as well as, you know, from those crews and some, sometimes the spokespeople also still trying to get information. But where you are on scene, is there any sense of when they might be able to go into that building to really begin those search and rescue efforts? I don't have a sense of when they're going to be able to go back in and do that. However, I do know that K-9 has been going through uh, as much as as much as a K-9 unit can to see if they find any any survivors, to see if they find anyone. What I understand was that at some point this morning, uh, the K-9s honed in on the garage that there were some survivors down in the garage that they were able to get them out. But um, as far as I know right now, I haven't seen from here. We can't really see what, when rescuers go into the rubble there, but uh, I'm sure that they obviously want to get in there as soon as they can. And as the mayor mentioned, one of the big concerns they have is the idea and the fact that the building pancaked, which is, is disturbing because if the building pancakes down, uh, the mayor was concerned about survivability. So uh, that was one thing that the mayor mentioned, but of course, we don't know uh, at this point. Ted, thank you very much.